<laughs> what is that pin and stretch? Because I'm because I'm pinning right here and then lengthening. What does that lengthen? Levator. It is a little bit of levator. We're we're getting into. What does it also lengthen? Trapezius. It's a pin and stretch. I use it all the time in session. I don't so much think about it as response to like. Whoa. How was that? That was amazing. That's exactly where it was hurting. I want you guys to trade that. I want you to try a little bit with both arms. You can change your position. If she was further down the table, I might be leaning into the table. I might be standing off of the table. I might have my leg further back. I just want to make sure that you're creating space in your own body, and you're also not just building up tension just on one side. But it's this really this junction. Essentially what's happening is I'm, I'm coming straight down in this guy, right into there. Then when I grab, when I hook in, I have a tendency to go, okay, to the front or to the back? Up or down? I'm just trying to figure out once I grab a section, what direction makes her nervous system more engaged? I'm looking for oh, that. There you go. That was good. And I'm going to have you face over towards the wall so they can see a bit better. Do you have problems on this side? Yeah. 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 And then, uh, any, any issues specifically with your neck? Uh, or? It's more like levator scap. It's more like levator scap, not so much like posterior. Um, a little too, yeah. A little bit? Okay. So, I'm going to assume that we've already done what we've just done. I'm usually not going to dive straight into this because we're generally, what I'll tell people is we work general to specific, superficial to deep. Like, yeah, we were kind of addressing levator scapula, but it was also trapezius and supraspinatus and then, you know, thoracic paraspinals, rhomboids, uh, paraspinals, so it's a splenius capitis, splenius services. Like, you know, it makes you sound like a medical professional when you use just, okay, when you make a video, just use one word like that. <laughs> and if you're really good, figure out what it means in Latin and then say, oh, piriformis, yeah, it's a, it means pear-shaped in Latin. Piriformis, form of a pear. Now you are a medical professional. <laughs> that lives on YouTube forever. You, you, you know, put that on your website in a blog post and like, whoa, he speaks Latin, yo. Yeah. So posterior cervical spine. I'm going to give her a little bit of length, which means I'm going to bring her head just a little further forward. So I've got a little more space here. And when we work on the neck, we don't want to go in front of what major muscle? Typically. SCM. Yes, SCM. 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 What is SCM? Sternomastoid. <laughs> connects at the sternum, connects at the mastoid process. I don't know what the clido part is. I don't know what that is. But That's clavicle? Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. the clavicle. Yeah. Yeah. Clavicle. Okay. So the SCM, the SCM is that, that part where we don't go in front of the SCM because what are we trying to avoid? Yeah, this is not Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. We are not trying to choke people out. We're not trying to choke people out. There's no reason to go in, into the anterior of the neck, especially in this class. Um, we're not covering muscles in the anterior of the neck. I get hate mail regularly because I will work on people's necks in a way that they have never seen and they freak out and go, oh my God, like you should never put a knee in somebody's posterior cervical spine. And I go, really? What planet do you live on? Now, when they see this as a single video on YouTube, they don't know me. They're just like, oh my God, that's totally unsafe. And I'm like, for you it is. Because I know my anatomy and I know what I'm doing, and there would be a graveyard outside my studio <laughs> if this hurt people. In fact, they keep coming back and paying me money to do it again and again and again. When we press into the paraspinals on the cervical spine, it's in the back, it's in the posterior, right? We don't have any problems pressing into suboccipitals, do we? We don't have any problem pressing into posterior cervical spine, right? We don't have any problem pressing down into levator scapula, right? It's all in the posterior. There's flesh here. I'm also going to get feedback from them. I'm not just going in with a point of my elbow. This is mean. This is a great tool. This is very specific. Remember how we're general to specific? We're working more specific, but I'm still essentially on my ulna or on this soft, fleshy portion of my forearm flexors. 
and I'm going to come over. I'm going to stack her arm so I've got some, a little handle here. And I go, listen, are you having more problems? You said like down below, kind of like towards levator scapula down here? Mm -hmm. Okay, and not as much towards the suboccipitals? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start down here. The other reason I'm going to start down here is the muscles tend to be a bit thicker here than they are at the top. They tend to taper, right? It's like your wrist. The muscles taper down here, but they're thick and bulky up here. This is where I'm going to put pressure first because this is more safe, and I'm in the posterior. Right? How's that? Now, I'm sinking down, over, and in into her posterior cervical spine. I'm going to change my body position to give you my keister. I apologize. Now, do you want more pressure forward or to the back? Uh, they both feel about the same. Okay. Now, you want me to go up the spine or down towards the feet? Okay, she wants down towards the feet, so I'm going to change my body position. How's that right there? Now, this is turning my arm. Because of the position she wanted, I'm going to switch it. How's that right there? Is that too much? A little too much? I'm going to back off just a hair. How's that? Now, down towards the feet. Is that too much? Okay, I'm going to back off a little bit right there. How's that? There we go. What if we give you just a little bit of jostle? Okay. That feels good, okay. Now, I can work all the way up her paraspinals this way. You're typically gonna want the person's head at neutral. You're not gonna wanna have a big pillow where their head is lifted up because the side of the neck is like in a weird curve. That's not gonna work. If anything, in some cases, I could actually take this out. And you see how this lengthens a bit more? For some people, that's gonna work. Mostly, I want to keep them at neutral, and this is usually just about the right height. There we go, how's that? There we go. So, back of the neck, I'm going to switch arms this time. I'm actually going to stack my weight on the table. Right there? Uh -huh. <coughs> Not too much? Uh -huh. Now, again, more posterior, and more to the front. Works both good. Both is great. You like the sawing a little bit? There we go. Now, I can still, if I pull up in your case, does it feel as good as when I go down? Uh, yeah, they both feel great. Right. And there, how's that? Mm, awesome. What if I give you some, some length as well? Mm -hmm. There we go. Now, I'm, I'm turning my hand. Hopefully you can see this. Do you like one or two? <laughs> I know you feel like you're an optometrist on this. Yes. So, one, right one. there? There we go. It's changing the position of whether I'm hitting with my ulna or my forearm extensors. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just finding out what she likes. And then from there, I can go up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to disengage and move just a little higher. How's that right there? Um, I don't feel So I went down a little bit and then posterior, right there. Mm -hmm. Is that too much? Mm -hmm. We give you some length. Yeah. Too much? No, that's, that's great. There we go. When she says it feels great, that's all I'm really looking for. I'm not making any judgments about the pressure she can handle, about whether it's pointed or broad. I'm just trying to give her deep, effective pressure that engages her nervous system. That is the number one thing. It's not about the tool I use. It's about doing something that's effective for her, and then it's also very easy on my body. If I decided to come up towards the suboccipitals, I could come in like this. I could come in. Um, I'll often do this. I'm going to sit on my hand, and I'm going to hook right into the it right there. There we go. Look pretty easy. Tell massage if you have one foot on the floor, they can't fire me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to push up towards the base of the skull or down the neck. Which one? Mm, this one really good. I can tell by the tone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just more, please. <laughs> if I go just a little bit up and down, back and forth. Now, if, I, if I'm there, do you want a little more forward or a little more to the back? A little more forward, right? 
Here. There we go. Does this look unsafe to any of you? Does this look familiar at all? Do you ever use your body mechanics this way? Um, <clears throat> time massage completely warped my sense of how to use a table. Um, once I came out the other side, people just saw me work and were like, dude, what is, what is this? When I started with the Psyche Truth channel, they wanted massage, and they're not massage therapists, so they have a conception of like what massage is, and I was like, let me work with these guys. And the next thing you know, 10 videos in, it's like, close on this, this, this. And when hundreds of thousands of people saw those videos, they went, dude, I, we don't even know what you're doing. What is this? Like, this doesn't even look like, you keep their clothes on? Like, you know, it was like, it was table tie. I never said it was table tie, because I had to draw a mainstream audience on YouTube kind of along into my journey, because they've seen mat work now. They've seen clothes. Am I killing you, by the way? Well, I'll get storytelling and just keep pumping. <laughs> okay. Now, if, if you had to choose, would you like what I'm pressing in a little sharper, maybe? Yeah. A little sharper? Okay. So I'm, I'm going to see if I can bring my, my elbow just a little closer right there. How's that? There we go. And I asked her for feedback. You'll notice general to specific, superficial to deep, even in what we've shown. And right there. Yeah. A little bit more to the back. A little bit to the front. Both back and forth. Sometimes I will groan for the clients. It saves them energy. They're very busy. So those are very simple. You'll, you'll notice if, you know, I changed my body mechanics several different times just so I can stack my arms in a way that feels comfortable. I'm not trying to pummel the person I'm working on. I'm just trying to do something that's effective that allows me to ease the strain on my body as much as possible. If you don't like one version, change to the other. I do want you to try the one where you sit on your hand and then just lean in. Because this is very lazy. Um, it's very easy for me to maintain pressure that way. And when we think about neck work, how often do any of you use the forearm or the elbow in the neck? How often? How many of you primarily use your fingers and hands? Guys, you're going to blow some minds if you learn how to use your forearm and elbow and maintain deeper compressions into the posterior cervical spine. Lots of people have tons of issue there. It's very, very effective. People have um, lots of allergies in Austin, lots of neck pain, uh, headaches, um, just, you know, this tension, right? Yeah, you're going to be able to help a lot of them with that very, very rapidly just from the pieces that we've shown. When I went through the neck just then, you guys are going to give and receive that in just a minute. If we did, I guess that's, is that three techniques so far? If we did all three of those on either side, how long of a session is that? It's why your sessions need to get longer. Because I, you know, have some physical problems. When you work on me, I'll be very specific about, yeah, can you work on this? Or not get this old hip thing? But then, even past that, do I have tension in my calves? My feet? My rotator cuff? Yeah. Like, I could easily, and that's why I lengthened my sessions to three hours, and I didn't compromise. There is no massage offered on my menu of services. There is a reboot that's three hours, and a belly reboot, which is 90 minutes. It's just abdominal work. That's it. Robert, yeah. how, how does sitting on your hand help you? Is it just stable? Um, I just, well, the thing is, if I sit like this, I'm, I'm bending my wrist, like in a, in a weird way. I find it just feels more receptive to be able to lean in this way. You, there's nothing wrong with having your hand this way. It's also using a different part of your forearm than if you're like this, and it's towards the extensors and the ulna. That's all. Working on a woman, and I had her draped through here. How comfortable would she be? And I, I'm a guy, and I have to be aware of that cultural context. That's why I prefer to keep clients clothed and just work through clothing for this portion. If you ladies feel comfortable draping, and you guys are good at drape, and, and you like that, I'm not telling you no. I'm just saying you have to be aware of like cultural context. When I'm working with women, if they get a breeze, then make it. It doesn't matter if I saw anything. <laughs> 
this is why I have people clothed at least initially, so I can move them around and see where we're going to work. How's this over here? It's going to stretch. Because now, adductors. How tight are guys in their adductors? Very tight. Pressure's okay? Yeah. I'm going to take him up, kind of like knee to same shoulder. How's this? Because this is, this is body weight. It's not just my arm. I'm just propping so I can lean. Now, when I bring him up and over, I'm working the musculature around his hip. Primarily what I feel like I'm doing is working his low back by using his leg as a handle to reach in. And I go, oh man, it's hamstrings. How's that? There we go. Back off. Three to five seconds. Back off. Three to five seconds. How's that? I like it. Cool. If you had to choose, do you like this external rotation or this internal rotation? Uh, external. External? Okay. Yeah. You say I let him choose? I don't make any judgments at all. It's his session. What makes him feel better? Do you like when I keep you like this or do you prefer like the work in the adductors? Uh, the other way was more stretch. More of a stretch this way? Yeah. What if I give you both? How's that? That's good. There we go. And you'll see that I'll change the body mechanics depending on what works best for me. My mic is a little bit, there we go. How's that? Because now it's still body weight. It's mainly just my hips leaning, right? But if you're a smaller petite woman, you can manhandle guys because you're using all of your body weight to do this. You're not just using your hands anymore. How's that? Yeah. And then I go, okay, I'm getting awfully close to his groin. And I'm going to change this real quick just so you can check this out. Where's the, does it have a towel with me? Do you guys see a blue towel? Yeah, I might have been when I put it away. Just throw me that real quick. So this is uh, something I include in the classes so you get like a, a bigger picture of what's going on. He's clothed. But I was going closer to his groin. It just didn't feel like quite as comfortable to me, especially if I'm working with like a first time client. They don't know what's going on. Now they're more covered than they were before. And the guys say, how many women get nervous when guys ask you to work on their adductors? You've never worked on them before. I hear the stories. I'm on Facebook, trust me. Are the guys who are looking for groin work and adductor work having ill intent or are they having adductor problems? Because it sounds about a 50-50 ratio. Right? So if, if he wants adductor work, how's this? Cool. All right. He feels more comfortable, more relaxed. It also dampens the pressure there. If I hook in right there, do you want more pressure lateral or medial? Uh, lateral. Yeah. More lateral right there? Yeah. Now up or down? Up more. Up more? Right there? Yeah, right there. Okay, what if I give you some jostle that way? Now, I'm working on the adductors. What happens to his hip from this position? External rotation. And then what's happening to his lower back here? When I have a handle on his leg like that, I'm, I'm grabbing all of this and essentially like rotating, because above his pelvis is turning, it's rotating all these facet joints in his lumbar spine. A lot of people, when they get a chiropractic adjustment, when I, when I put them in that kind of twist over, they're like, oh, well, that's just like my chiropractor. Because when the chiropractor <laughs> adjusts the facet joints, they give them that quick, high velocity thrust to open those facet joints because the muscles have like tightened down on one side. We work on soft tissue. Soft tissue is what pulls the spine off to begin with. I come in and slowly, methodically work through that soft tissue, but here's the thing. He thinks I'm working on his leg. I'm using his leg as a handle to reach down into his pelvic bowl, mobilize his sacrum, and start to shift his spine through here. Does it make sense? I want you guys to try that. And if you don't have this, you can still take a, um, a pillowcase and like fold it over several times, or if you have like an extra sheet in your room, and use it instead of a towel.